<laughs> everybody. Uh, this is Dr. Boz. It's Tuesday night, and we are going live while on vacation. <laughs> the truth is, I was about 50% sure I would get to do this, and I'm definitely um, on a learning curve for this uh, for this vacation. So I chose the title uh, of. Um, I wish I'd known. <laughs> so I hope to make this worth your while. We won't be on for a full hour. I am super thankful to have four bars of upload. So if you are watching and you can give me just a heads up that you can hear me and you can see me, I would love it. So I did find a, a pretty uh, representative backdrop for, for Rome. And that is that everything is made of marble and everything is old. So I have a few things that I have learned in the first two days of this adventure. First, we're in Rome for a week, and then we are going to be in Cairo. I am speaking at the um, Keto Oncologist, uh, Keto in Cairo, but really put on by Keto Oncologist. Uh, and if you're looking for some CME, continuing medical education or continuing uh, education, that conference really does have um, the, uh, the metrics behind it, the lecture I'm giving, I actually rewrote a couple of times on the plane and think I'm still going to rewrite it one more time before I give it, uh, but really has some inputs on how, uh, how, how the keto diet has not only changed over the years, but what are some of the things I use to, to measure is someone healthy. Um, but <laughs> let me get to several of the things so somebody puts in there i hope your knee is okay so i'm kneeling right now <laughs> because i think i've walked like a thousand miles over the last several days uh last two days really here in rome and as i um i'll tell you it's not perfect but i'm out of the brace and the pain is down to about a five out of ten instead of a ten out of ten where we started so thanks for asking and um Part of what I learned has a little bit to do with not just knee pain, but how well can we uh, prepare for a, for a trip uh, that has so many temptations. I think the first thing that I will say, I wish I'd known. I am 52, and I'm gonna sit crisscross applesauce because that really hurts my knee. Uh, how, how can, I, let's see if I can make that one more adjustment in my, uh, my life's there we go that's better um, so I wish I'd known uh, number one I am 52 years old and I should have come to Rome a lot earlier <laughs> I should have done this a lot earlier so if you've ever had anything close to Rome on your bucket list the first uh, 48 hours are incredible for how well I I think the experience is but also just I don't know. I have these folks from Europe say, you folks from America, you like old things. <laughs> so the history lessons here are like older than our country by, by like <laughs> a century. And it, it, it does really open up to see what happens when time passes with, you know, architectural things, but also the cultures. And as the religions have taken over this country, <laughs> Uh, again and again and again to watch what happened to their culture. I, it's been fascinating to just hear the guides teach about their city. But so, number one, I wish I'd known, I'd wish I'd known how cool Rome was when I was like 25 and put that on my bucket list a lot sooner. Um, but the second thing that I'll tell you, I wish I'd known. Um, so in preparation for this trip, uh, well, I knew that there was going to be lots of temptations, lots of new foods, and that's really where my weaknesses come about, is that I like to taste them all, I like to try them all, I think that's part of travel. And I, I did what I tell patients to do, but I hadn't really practiced this my, myself because I hadn't, I hadn't changed time zones. And I tell you, before you change time zones, before you go on vacation, to fast, to fast until the sun rises. So in my example, we left on um, late on Sunday night and we landed in Rome. We left out of Miami, had a direct flight through to Rome. We landed in Rome at about 11 o'clock in the morning. In preparation for this, on Sunday we woke up and 
fasted, had no food all day Sunday, which is pretty normal for me. Um, resisted the options that were on the plane. Um, and then you struggled through whatever you call that. You could say night, but it's an overnight flight, but who sleeps on a plane like that? So we wake up or we get off the plane and it's 11 o'clock in the morning. And so that sunrise was our, our first, um, you know, we, by the time we got to food, it was probably like two, two or 30 or three o'clock in the afternoon. And the truth is my blood sugars did really well. I had kind of run out of access to, for a continuous glucose monitor. And I had one left at the house that was supposed to go to husband and I stole it. <laughs> I said, honey, I'm going to wear this because I really want to see what happens when I change time zones. The last couple times I've done this, it's been a disaster. It's been like three days before my brain really works well. Uh, my sugars, well, I wasn't using a CGM, but I was really did not do well with the travel and did not do well with how, um, how much that blood sugar changed over the course of um, a month. And when I was, we had gone to China and then Thailand. And the time before that, we'd gone to, to the Philippines. Those were the major shifts in time zones. And I almost didn't want to do it. I felt so terrible when I did it that it really pushed me to say, not doing that again, not, not going to do that again. So this is the first time we switched time zones this much. And I'm telling you, I wore my CGM. It really did stay in the double digits. It did not get to the triple digits. My, you know, the consequences of, of traveling for me have always been a lot of swelling in my legs. I had very little of that. So number one, uh, wish I'd known how powerful that um, fasting preposition. And again, I, I fasted for, you know, several years once a week and I can't believe how much that like liberated me to be able to not spend two or three of my vacation days feeling lousy I really within I mean I, I just didn't feel the lousiness that usually happens when I switch time zones like that all right so the second thing I wanted to talk about was it also relates to CGMs I'm not trying to over talk about this but I can't believe how much I've learned is that typically when I travel, I, well, I think part of travel is to experience the food and the culture. And there are so many foods. Like tonight we just had supper and one of the things on the menu was, I had to write this down. Yeah, broccoli flan. Yes, F-L-A-N, broccoli flan. And if you've ever tried that, I would love for you to give me a thumbs up in the, in the video because I only thought that flan was something sweet that you had at the end of end of a meal that kind of tasted like creme brulee, but this was broccoli <laughs> flan. I had never tasted anything like it, but it was. It, it's typical for what I do when I look at a menu from a different experience. Which, I mean, I don't think I knew that you could cook <laughs> squid or. Um, octopus in as many ways as they have on the menu here and so of course I have to I have to try it <laughs> and what I've learned with my CGM is a couple of bites gives me the satisfaction without shooting my sugars too high now those foods aren't bad but you might you might guess that on vacation I'm gonna also try the desserts of Rome and well some of them weren't what I was expecting and in the past I would have probably just had a, a more of it but as I watched what that sugar, what that dessert did to my sugars I limited myself to a couple of bites and and then I watched to see how quickly my blood sugars went back to normal so I like it to be in the 80s and when I would taste some of these foods yeah not gonna lie some of them <laughs> set it up to 180 100 points higher and it did that within the course of about 20 minutes so they were super sugary way sugary way more than I thought the menu was telling me and a couple of bites later, I said, okay, that's, that's really intense. And I'm very thankful to tell you that the sugars went back down to double digits within an hour. This is really one of the things that I've been working on. Uh, part of my lecture for, the, for, the, for, for Hack Your Health and for this uh, conference here in Egypt next week is discussing how um, our burst in blood sugars, meaning when your sugars boost up and then they are, I mean, like the, the time spent above 120, 
which in my life has probably been a lot. But since I've started tracking it, I'm really trying to keep it less than 100. And then when I eat to really not get above 110, that doesn't count when you're in Rome. <laughs> so when these blood sugars shoot up to almost you know, 180, I mean, close to 200, first time I've seen that in a while, I was very thankful that they reset back down to their double digits within like 45 minutes. And to me, that was one of the most successful improvements I've had in my health. As I talk about the things I'm gonna share in my lecture, the longer that blood sugar stays above 120, the more likely your body is to, to use an escape pathway called the polyol pathway. And, and I'll show this in my slides, but, but it's when blood sugar is high, and unfortunately high doesn't mean 180. High means anything above 120 is when we think this starts. And especially when the blood sugar in your brain is above that, that it will turn it into fructose. Uh, now, I don't eat much fructose in my life anymore. Like, I'm sure most of you that watch this, high fructose corn syrup is off the menu. Fruits are a rarity. Um, but even when I have fruit, it's just not the volume of fruit that I would have had in the past. So I, I consume very little fructose. You need fructose to make, as one of the major pushes to make uric acid and the uric acid in the brain is one of those markers that says your rate of dementia is much faster and higher. So of course I want to prevent that. So pushing my blood sugars to stay below 120 is one of my goals. Okay, that's not a goal for Rome, but that's a goal for the rest of my life. But I was really happy that when I push it up to 180, it would go right back down, meaning before the 60 minutes was up from that bite of high sugar it was back down to double digits and that the the lecture that I'll go through talks about when we look at the plaques inside the brains of people with Alzheimer's we know that there is a high amount of uric acid a urate that has been stored it was too high to be eliminated and uh, uric acid cannot pass the blood-brain barrier unless you have a damage in that blood-brain barrier so knowing that the blood-brain barrier is permeable is, is what they is what our scientists thought in the past the way that uric acid must be getting into the the plaques of people with Alzheimer's is because they must have a leaky blood brain barrier now for the the um, veterans who watch the show you know how much I like the word leaky gut it's about how well I like the word leaky blood brain barrier but that increased permeability where the the uric acid could pass into the brain was what we thought was the way it was getting into the brains of our Alzheimer's patients. But that turns out not to be true. The way it's getting into the brains of Alzheimer's patients is they're pushing their blood sugar up to that higher levels. And uh, 120 is pretty strict, so that's what my goal is. But when I look at patients' blood sugars who are getting up 150, 160, 170, 180, one of the escape ways to get that blood sugar to lower is they turn it into your, your, your body and your brain, your, your brain cells, use this pathway called the polyol pathway to convert glucose into fructose. And once it's fructose, you will make it into uric acid. And that is a rapid demise of how well our brains will, you know, stay away from, uh, you know, th they will become demented. They will have dementia, whether that's Alzheimer's or non-Alzheimer's, that high uric acid is the danger. And I'm gonna explain this a lot more in my lectures coming up, so, but as I'm watching myself on my vacation, I was really happy to say that my CGM helped me say I had one or two bites of these very interesting foods that I know are off the menu when I'm at home, but on vacation, I'm telling myself, no, I wanna experience this. And I'm very happy to say that it's back down to double digits. So I wish I would have used this tool in other places because I didn't. All right, so a couple other things. Uh, so number one was fast before I travel. I can't believe how much that helped. Number two was watching my CGMs real time helps me limit the foods. Like I still want to taste all the foods of Rome. <laughs> I, I really like how um, well they serve red wine before every meal. Maybe not breakfast, but every meal that I'm eating, there's red wine available. And well, I think it's helping keep my blood sugars lower. <laughs> I did a video experiment with some of my teammates 
uh, because they said, yes, if you have vinegar before you eat a high carbohydrate food, it stops your blood sugars from rising. And I, I said, I don't believe you. So we all wore CGMs and it turns out that a little vinegar before you eat your food did blunt my rise of blood sugars uh, for high carbohydrate foods. Uh, so I wonder if red wine does the same thing. And this week while in Rome, I'm doing an experiment that I'm having red wine <laughs> before, every one of my before every one of my meals to see if it blunts my sugars. Um, and I think that uh, is, is absolutely um, something that I don't know uh, what the answer is, but I'm happy to be your experiment to look at that before I eat my um, eat the foods of Rome. I'll tell you a couple more things and then I will look at a few questions to see if anybody has questions. Um, the, um, the, the, the other things that I found in Rome that I, I, I knew or I'd heard people tell me about was you must try the pizza. So I'm sure for those people who've been to Rome that's not a big, uh, that's not a big announcement but for me, I don't know, I remember the first time I got in a Tesla. And I, actually when I drove a Tesla, and I said, they shouldn't call this a car because it's such a bizarre, different experience that the word car or automobile just doesn't translate. And I think that's the same thing with pizza in Rome, that it's such a different experience than any pizza I've ever eaten in my life that you shouldn't use the word pizza. They need to find a different word for whatever it is that I'm eating here that they call pizza because I would like this at home. <laughs> and although it's not perfectly keto, it is, oh, well, it's amazing. It is amazing. Um, all right, so I have a, I'm gonna <laughs> go through a couple of things here. I know that's been about 15 minutes. Um, I have a few things that I, um, I have a, a couple of questions that folks have typed in there. Uh, several of you that didn't check in at the beginning are asking about my knee. Um, oh, I know another thing that I was going to tell you that I wish I'd known. So today, um, my husband and I went on a tour of the, the ancient city and then a tour of the Colosseum. And that's not the Colosseum behind us, but it is what every place here in the, the city center of Rome seems to look like. But as we were walking around, my knee definitely told me that I've been a little stubborn saying, I don't need an MRI, I don't need an MRI, I don't need an MRI, I'm okay, I'm fine, I'm fine. And it was about mile number eight where I said, it shouldn't hurt this much. <laughs> so uh, although we did get around and I am still walking and tomorrow we go to the Vatican City and uh, look at the, um, that tour, I hope I can make it. <laughs> through the walking of that tour and then it's several days before we go to Egypt uh, and I am gonna have to like ice my knee again so for those of you asking about my knee it is a little bit better but not great um, and as we were walking around the city of Rome um, I found that the uh, experience has uh, something that I want I want to do again <laughs> I want to stay here a little bit longer and when 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 I look at not just uh, what I hope to gain out of this, it's uh, the experiences of the food, the culture, the, uh, the um, you know, the tourist type of experience uh, of processes. But as I left my team behind in Florida, I also hope that um, I share with them that you need to take breaks a little bit more often than I do. This is a character flaw that at 52 years old, I'm quite certain that I should be taking breaks a little more often than I have. And um, I'm proud to say that I'm gonna learn that a little better in the next year. <laughs> um, there was one more thing in my notes that I wanted to tell you about, let's see. Um, I'll look at your questions, it's gonna come back to me. There was one more thing I was gonna tell you, uh, hold on. Um, oh, I know what it was. Okay, so we got back from that long walk today and I walked to the pharmacy and I found some Epsom salt saying, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna soak in this bathtub and see if I can just get that knee pain to get down a little bit. But my phone had died. 
And so I said, Chad, I, I gave my phone to my husband, says, go to the hotel, plug this in. I'm going to go to the pharmacy. I'll be right back. Yeah. So here I am at the pharmacy and I bought the Epsom salt and I go out and I said, you know, I'm not going to go back the way I came. I'm just going to go around the block. I'm putting that in air quotes. I'm going around the block. So I turned right. I went a little bit, a little bit further. I turned right. And I should turn right again and be back at my hotel, right? <laughs> nope. <laughs> That's not what happened. Two and a half hours later. So this is, yeah, the other thing that I wish I'd known. Two and a half hours later, I finally got back to my hotel. Because, well, I started walking and then there's like, oh my gosh, there's so much fashion here. And there was, you know, shops that I was looking at. And I would go out of a shop and say, well, I think it's just a couple more right turns and I get back to my hotel. <laughs> Yeah, and then, and then I really knew I was lost when I'm looking at the hotels around me, I'm looking for the name of my hotel, and now I've looked at so many hotels, I can't remember the name of my hotel. <laughs> so I'm like, I don't know, it begins with an M. <laughs> so then I got really lost, and I have this bum knee, and I don't have um, a cell phone with me, but I have a receipt from the pharmacy that's about a block from my hotel. I somehow end up at the uh, president's, uh, cap president's mansion or president's um, residence. Um, and there were some very people, nice people in a uniform who knew just enough broken English for me to say, I'm really lost. <laughs> I've been walking for about uh, 90 minutes and I cannot find my hotel. And now I'm a little confused. <laughs> I can't remember the name of my hotel. <laughs> yeah. So note to self. Um, if you're going to venture out without your cell phone in Rome, don't lose the name of your hotel. <laughs> All right. Well, I think I'm going to call it a night. It's been about 20 minutes. It's, it's a short live, but I wanted to check in. I, di I will be live. My husband really wants me to do the live next week from the Pizza Hut where you can see the pyramids of Cairo in the background from the Pizza Hut. So tune in next week. I will have a few more tidbits uh, for some of the, actually I have a couple ideas for next week's live that I'll, I'll share with you in the thumbnail for next week. Thank you for tuning in and we are uh, improving your health one ketone at a time from Rome. <laughs> see you next week, guys.